Hey everybody, I'm Hi. Linda. I'm Mary. And we're um, we're taping several today, so y'all probably see us with the same clothes on. Yeah. But uh, we're doing this to make good use of our time. And what we're going to do, we've had some requests for peanut brittle. This is one of the products that we sell. But I'm going to just make a, a small batch today. Yeah. And Mary's got, um, she's got some pans lightly buttered. And so what I started out with is I got my boiler hot and I got a cup of light k row and i'm going to do and and this is really okay, easy to do um what i use is just equal parts of everything so i got a cup of payro i'm going to do a cup of sugar and this is a half a cup measure so i'll do this twice and um the trick to this peanut brittle so that's a cup is um knowing when to pour it up uh at the that's a big trick to it. Um, I get these pants out of California. They're the Jumbo Redskins. I like them because they make it look pretty. So I buy like 40 pound bags and just keep them in the freezer so they'll stay fresh. I'm just, I've just got uh, butter, soft butter, paper towel, and just wiping the bottom of these pans lightly with butter. Right, you don't want it dripping in butter. No. You just want it lightly. So, whoops, I dropped the peanut. Sorry about that. I always put a few extra peanuts in just for good measure. <laughs> okay, so, um, and I'm, I'm sure everybody knows this, but if you if you don't use nuts a lot, cons, walnuts, almonds, peanuts, um, you need to store them in the freezer because they'll get, Mommy used to say rain, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> they'll get old. Yeah. And um, so you need to keep them in the freezer to save, to keep them fresh. Um, I do keep excess nuts in the freezer, but I'm, I'm basically taking them out almost as soon as I put them in there because I, uh, so I use so much of them. But um, the, um, it, it always helps to do that. So I've got my burner on medium. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit to um, probably to six to get this started. This is probably the smallest batch of peanut brittle I've ever made. It's real tiny. We used to uh, use those pots at the church of Jesus Name Tabernacle when I was making peanut brittle four or five times a week. We'd use them this, we'd make them this big. And I was a lot smaller then than I am now. <laughs> in weight anyway, same height. We called her Mousy because she was so tiny. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, I picked up those um, pots of peanut brittle. We'd have four pots going at one time on the big stove and I picked them up hours on end. I don't know how in the world I did it. I couldn't do it now. But um, but I do make it at, and when I'm making batches, I make them in bigger pots than this. So show what that looks like. So this is what this looks like here. You'll see the syrup and the sugar. The syrup and uh, sugar is dissolving. And this is going to start cooking. It's going to start boiling pretty quick here. And um, it's just a, it's something fun to make. It's a, um, uh, we used to make peanut brittle when we didn't have money to buy snacks. And we did it because it was cheap and, uh, you need a, a, half, a handle? No, um, this, these boilers, these handles, uh, the rope. Yeah. The, the will, these little, will this little handle fit on there? Um, it probably will. That's, that's one there. That's that thing you gave yeah, me the last time that's I was a little, there. That's a neat little handle. Yeah. Um, I got those. Did I get those at TJ Mac or Tuesday morning? No, I got, got them at Tuesday morning. Um, that's something else everybody asked me about, uh, different things. Tuesday morning and TJ Maxx are two of my favorite stores. I love them. I'm always finding a little kitchen stuff in them. And, um, every time I go to Longview, I, those are two stores that I always go in if I have time. And most of the time I find something I want in there. <laughs> we always do. I usually find a lot of what I want. I'll go, I'm, I'm with her a lot of times and, uh, She's going in there for something specific. I said, well, I'll go in with you, but I don't need nothing. And I'll come out with something every time because I, I always find something I want. I'm telling you, I have somebody uh, asked the other day, the, there's always stuff on Facebook. Somebody asked, what is something that you have an excess amount of? And I said, oh, that would be cake pans. <laughs> I've got two huge totes, probably almost three huge totes. Yeah, of just about every kind of cake pan you can imagine, from a three inch yeah. all the way up to yeah. a fourteen inch, and that doesn't even count the the um, cheap pan, pans uh, pans I got. Look at you! I don't think Mama made peanut brittle, did she? When we were growing up, she didn't. I didn't. I think don't remember so. her making peanut brittle. Um, yeah. I didn't you know think she made peanut butter cookies. Yeah. And, um, she baked. I tell you what, popcorn. We did. We did a lot of the cooking. 
wasn't that fancy, but because mama sewed. Mama sewed all day long. She could make us three dresses a piece in one yes, day. She would. She did. We had, because mama was so industrious and she bought stuff on sale. I mean, she, she knew how to bargain shop. But I, I dare say, we probably had a hundred dresses each. Oh, in the we closet. had we had we had a closet that was probably, uh, I don't know three. I'm just guessing like three yards long. She did that extra closet for our clothes besides our this wasn't in our bedroom. Besides our bedroom closet, we had so many clothes. Our neighbors, our friends, they'd come over. They uh uh want to borrow some of our clothes. <laughs> And it's okay. I mean, hey, we had so many till we, that was okay. We did, and we're not we're not saying this bragging. Uh, probably every one of them. I doubt that any dresses we had in there cost over a dollar no, a piece. They, they, they weren't expensive, but she, they, but they were but they she, were nice. And they she were dressed cute. us a lot for she a long did. time. She dressed and us a she lot. She made everything I wore until I was probably yeah. She still sewed for you. Old. She still she sewed did. for you after you got grown. You know what, Linda? I was thinking about because uh, Mama sewed so much. Uh, I don't even know what, um, what, how far down the relatives was. There was Hol one they Holloways. Holloways, yeah. Holloways. They had, uh, they were, they were less fortunate than we were. They didn't even have electricity. They lived way they, back. They, they didn't did. even live in the same town with us. But it was, I think it's in Augustine County, wasn't it? Yes. I think it was across the river. Yeah, and um, and those little girls. How many girls was it? Two or three? Was two of them. Two of them, and. Um, they didn't have that many clothes. My mother made those little uh, little dresses. I don't know how many. She probably made them five or six a piece. This is right before school started one year. Yeah. And she made those little girls, I don't remember, probably five or six at least each of the little dresses for that little girl. And they, went and they were beautiful dresses too. And I'm not really the jealous type. <laughs> but when we, when we carried those dresses down there, there was a little spark of jealousy in me because they were beautiful dresses. You know, we had plenty. We did, and you were just a kid. You know, I mean, and wasn't... I thought, now she's giving them beautiful dresses away. But mother talked to me on the way home because I guess she could tell I was kind of a little bit down, you know. And uh, she said, Mary, she said, you have got so many clothes. You And, and you got to think about uh, how unfortunate, you know, uh, how much less that they had than us. And and it was okay. She made, and that's what mama done. Anytime us kids, when we got, uh, uh, get a bit bad spirit or ugly or something, she would, she'd try to explain to us, look, you got to be thankful for what you yeah. got. And, and so I remember she, she got me out of my little pouting spell, but, um, I wondered about that. And you know, I love that little girl. I really did. I, I don't even remember her name, but I seen her a few times. We didn't I see each just, other very I often. I could just see their faces. Me too, but I just, I, I just, um, I don't remember their names. I, I did for years, but anyway, and I then, hope the girls appreciated me as much as, yes, as, as what, uh, mama had, had in, in enjoyment and giving them to them. Yes, yeah, she did. Um, Mary and I have a, we're from Nacogdoches, I think everybody probably knows that now, we're, um, we did not grow up in, in the, uh, in the country. Uh, country, a lot of people think, because we have a heavy East Texas accent, which I do not apologize for, that's who <laughs> we are, um, we, that we were from the country. We did not grow up in the country. We lived in town. We were probably less than two miles from downtown yeah. Nacogdoches. Yeah. We always had uh, modern facilities. Uh, we had good cars and, and you know, we weren't wealthy. We, we were just, we were just, we blessed. probably at times thought we were poor because we didn't live on the side of town where the popular kids lived, but we had a good home. Yeah, we did. It was a nice home. It was pro probably the biggest home on the it street. It was the biggest house on the street. Yeah. Um, it was, um, we had one, two, three, we had four bedrooms. We only had one bathroom, but it was a huge bathroom. We had four bedrooms, and, and in those upstairs. bedrooms, we had, we, had upstairs, yes. yeah. we had two, three, four, five, we had eight full-size full beds, beds in those bedrooms. We had a lot of companies. We were back always then, in company. Back then, we had sleepovers. You know, the girl, I mean, it wasn't nothing for for our, our now sister-in-law that's married to our oldest brother, her twin sister. She, we met them when she was 15, so she's been in the family since she was 15. So we just, she, that's, 
you know, that's just another sister to us. That's why we yes. called her and sister. And Charles would and, pick her up, and, and Debbie, too. Debbie yeah, hasn't been Debbie. In, in the family as long because they're yeah. younger. Yeah. But um, uh, we look at Debbie the same way. Right. But um, Charles, would they lived in Appleby, which, what, 15 miles from Nacogdoches? Yeah, and that seemed like a long ways. <laughs> but he would pick them up on Friday afternoon, and they would stay until after church on yeah. Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And that was probably... Maybe one or two weekends out of the entire time, what, what three, four yeah, years, yeah. that they didn't spend yeah. the weekend with us. And we loved it. Well, we loved it because um, uh, on Saturdays, we would, um, uh, uh, I mean, on um, Sundays afternoon, we would fix each other's hair all evening. We'd, we'd be singing in the in the living room. We had well, we had two living rooms. What we used to, well, nowadays they call the former living room. That's where the piano was. And, um, and we would sing all afternoon. Linda played the piano. Charles played the guitar. I had play a mandolin and accordion. Yeah, and played accordion. I played the accordion some. And um, that was our life. That was our life. We ha and we had a good time. Maybe either that we played ball. But we had we had we had a, a we liked company. And Mama she brother kids be at our house than for us to be somewhere else. Yes. And that's, so that's where we gathered at my And at everybody our house. always knew they were welcome in our house. Absolutely. They were always made to feel welcome. I remember one of my cousins saying uh, back years ago uh, when a bunch of people wrote things uh, on Mother's birthday, little notes and things, and he said it was Herschel, yes. uh, Mama's twin brother's son, that when they were at our house, if Mama gave us a quarter, which that was what we got, if we got money, she gave, made sure that every kid yeah, there had a quarter. quarter. Yeah. And and it's um, it's very important not to treat not kids to make different. a child. That's if, right. If you don't have enough for all of them in my Just book, you shouldn't give any. That's right. That's right. That's that's the way I do my kids, my grandkids. I know Braden, I, my uh, youngest grandson. Uh, he's at my house more than Nathan is, and. Uh, he feels at home here, and and he does whatever, and he doesn't mind asking me because I, I don't mind. What do you want? Or if we go to the store, if you want something, he'll he'll pick it up and, and get it. Um, but um, I, I, whenever I buy him something, I said go get Nathan something, and Nathan wouldn't be with me. But I said you've got a brother, go buy go there and pick him out a drink or or a candy or whatever it is he's picking up. Or they into these some kind of cards. They just collect cards. And, um, and I said, get your brother one. And so we'll give it to Nathan when we see him. Uh, yeah, I just don't believe in showing partiality. You very just don't do it. Not to treat I kids love both them different. boys. I love both of them the same. And um, Mom and Daddy, um, you know, we didn't, uh, we may have mentioned this before, but we didn't go out to eat. That's one reason we like to cook so much at home. We, if we were in the car going somewhere, like if Daddy was going to look for hay to buy or something, of course we had to eat then. A lot of times when we were traveling, he would stop and buy milk and bread and, and meat, and we'd make sandwiches and eat in the truck. But um, uh, on Sunday afternoon, I'm pretty sure we have mentioned this before, but some of our new followers haven't heard it. Uh, sometimes we'd take a Sunday ride. And uh, we would go. There's a little Dairy Mart. Was that the name of it, Dairy Mart? I don't know. I know somebody. Street. Somebody said Dairy Mart, but I, it might. You know what? It might have been Dairy Mart. It's like a Dairy Queen. I thought it was Dairy Queen, but it was real small. It's yeah. right there on North Street, coming out of off of Powers. And uh, we would get a nickel ice cream cone. And Mary uh, didn't ever get ice cream. She always got potato chips. I never liked ice cream until I started getting in my senior year years and now I eat ice cream. I keep it in the freezer all the time. And that was a family of six. Yeah. So it cost yeah. thirty cents. Yeah. For us yeah. to have an ice yeah. cream or or we yeah. had our choice of ice cream or right. potato chips and we would get that. And that was a treat, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. And well I remember uh, uh we would have uh at our church we had Saturday nights was uh youth night. And we had friends that would drive a pretty good way. Well, actually, they lived in Henderson, and they would drive the Nacogdoches. Forty-something miles. Yeah. Right? Which yeah, back then was a long, long ways. But at the church, we'd all get in the car, and we'd go to where Sonic? It we'd, was Ken's. We'd go to Ken's yeah. convenience oh, store. Oh, that's right. That's right. We'd do that, too. We yes. did Sonic sometimes. But we we went, did. We went to uh, Ken's um, um, it was convenience store. store. And they'd go in there and buy big bags of tater chips and soda pops. They, and we would we would go somewhere and park 
in a parking lot and sit and eat. <laughs> now that's terrible. That they sound <laughs> terrible. But it is no, we had never we we wasn't we weren't allowed leaders. to go anywhere, Harley. But, but they <laughs> this was the parents were with them. Yeah. Um, they would eat a whole big bag each and, <laughs> and drink two or three soda water. We didn't eat like that. <laughs> it was it was hilarious to us. We just thought it was so funny. Because to, to us, that's wasting food, wasting money. That's what we thought. How can they spend so much money on junk? I'm going to show you. I've got to put this back on the fire. But um, you're going to notice that the peanuts are splitting. And they're starting to turn a little bit golden brown. And, of course, the syrup is thickening up, too. So I love to hear these popping. And you'll hear them. I don't know if you can hear them on the video or not. But when the when they, they start getting close to getting done, they're going to start popping. And the peanuts will split. I just think that's the neatest sign. I know. I know. You, and you see, it take, it's a long process. I mean, you have to stand there and stir and stir and stir. Now, we're making a small batch, but imagine making a big batch. It takes a pretty strong arm it to, does. <laughs> to stir all that. I've got uh, scars on my toes. Don't ever make peanut brew in sandals. And this is when I was a kid. When I say kid, I'm talking about a grown woman, but I still consider myself <laughs> a kid in my early 20s. And I would make peanut brew in sandals. And she made peanut brittle for 10 years. Yeah, for 10 years. And I Every day. swapped some out and it went straight on my toe. Ooh. And my two toes, they stuck together, wow. literally. And I've got scars on from it. But um, I knew not to take it off because if you get hot peanut brittle on you, you got to leave it on it till it cools. If you don't, you're going to take your skin off with it. But it was painful. We worked hard, but we've had some good times. We did. You know, we okay, had... Okay, it's getting thicker and thicker and thicker. Now, is it time I'm, for your... Uh, it's no, it's still okay. white. So, okay. I've got soda, and I need a little bit of salt, and I need to okay. get my vanilla. All right. Uh, how much salt? I'll get the measuring cup. Because just, it um, seems like this salt, just, Linda, is, um, it's saltier. Mm. This is a fresh box. And uh, I just noticed the things that I salt with it, I almost get it too salty, and I don't I'm use just a good put salt. a sprinkle, so probably not even, um, not even a fourth a teaspoon. I'm just gonna put okay. a little bit in it. And y'all don't laugh at my little tiny bottle of vanilla. Um, <laughs> I bought several of these. Babies. I've got vanilla. I told you not to bring. Do you want me to? Oh, it's not open. I hadn't got well, it open. Mine, well, mine ain't either. Well, not here. I got some of this open here. We just take okay. yours back home with you. And I don't, I don't buy vanilla in these tiny bottles. Is that okay? That so okay. Happen. Yeah, it's fine. How much flavor do you want? Um, a teaspoon. Okay. And, um, and I'm also going to need a, 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 probably about a big teaspoon of butter. So uh, what we've done, we've had a cup of sugar, a cup of syrup, and a, a big cup of peanuts. I probably put at least a cup and a fourth because I always like to put extra peanuts. A teaspoon of butter and a teaspoon of vanilla. Yeah, and you don't have to measure it. You can just eyeball okay. it. All right. um, Mary's buttered the pans. Yeah, I got the pans butter. And we've got our soda there, our vanilla, and our butter, and our salt. And once this gets to where that I want to pour it up, that I'm going to put all that in it. And it's going to fizz because when you put something in here... The vanilla and butter is going to fizz up. Now, hopefully, it's not. You did say, hey, you know what? Yeah, that's a teaspoon. It looks like that's a tablespoon. How much baking soda do you say? Yeah, I'm probably going to put a tablespoon okay. in it. Okay. Yeah. I have little cups at home that I use to measure, mm -hmm. and I, I don't even measure it. I just know what go, how much goes in those little cups. But I think that looks about right because this is not a big, um, it's not a big batch. Now, we make peanut patties, too. They're done different than this. And uh, talk about stir. You have to stir peanut patties. I mean, you have to stir them every minute for 22 minutes when you're making peanut patties after you take it off the stove. So when you, when you, uh, when you buy this, you know there's a lot of work involved in it. <laughs> it it's just time. It's time is what it is. It's, it's just time and knowing, stirring. knowing when to take it up. You can't walk away and leave this. If mm. you do, you're going to have some burnt peanut brittle, and you don't want that. So um, it smells. It you does. Can smell those no. peanuts roasting. Yeah, it smells delicious. And this may only make three or four pans. No, it, may not, okay. it may not even make six. Hey, that's pans. all right. We're just we're just giving y'all an idea of what how much work it goes into. I'm it. not I'm not used to making this tiny batch. 
when I was traveling one time and I was in Homer, Louisiana and I had made fried pies a couple of times. They always um, tried to give us, get us a hotel that um, had kitchens. We love residents in because they had kitchens and a lot of them had ovens. And uh, But we were staying in this hotel. It was a small town and they didn't have full kitchens. So we just had, had a microwave refrigerator. And my study manager, she wanted me to make fried pies. And I said, okay, I can make them, but I've got to have a boiler big enough to fry them in. And um, so I went down to a little part of town that had a lot of thrift stores in them. And I found, these are these are commercial boilers. And I found this boiler, like we used to make peanut brittle in it. Jesus name Tabernacle, one of the big ones. And it was pretty beat up, but I knew that it would work. I said, I'll take it. Took it back and cleaned it up real good and made all the filling in the hotel in a little tiny microwave, mind you, and mixed up the dough and filled the pies and went to her apartment. They, they always had an apartment or a house that they rented. We were in an area for two months. And um, so I got that big boiler, which was this big around, and I filled that boiler about this far full from the top with oil. Wow. That and was that was a mistake if you got it that much. Didn't know it boil over? Well, it, no, I was it watching it very close, but <laughs> my study manager, she was she was looking cool, but I could read her mind. I knew she was freaking out. Afraid I was going to catch that yeah. old apartment. So I was thinking when you said you put that much oil Never in spilt it. a drop of the grease. I fried every one of them pies. <laughs> and I, I, she, she went in the living room and started typing on the computer. I knew she was probably texting or typing her friend saying, um, open the pot, place don't burn down, but maybe call in the fire department. But I knew what I was doing. It didn't scare me a bit. I knew exactly what I was doing. Okay, I'm gonna. What are you ready for? I'm gonna stir this just another minute or two, and then we're gonna. Uh, what goes I'm first? Put the uh, butter and the salt and the vanilla in first. And the salt. Yeah, I think I think we're it. ready. And if you can see this, you'll see that the peanuts are really kind of a golden brown. I don't use a candy thermometer. Uh, the only thing I use a candy thermometer, I do use it on peanut patty. You got too much butter? That's fine. And um, and I use it on divinity. And other than that, that's the only time I use candy thermometers. Okay. So, um, is that about, what is it, about a tablespoon? Yeah. Then? It's probably a scant tablespoon. Okay. Okay. Now, now salt. You can tell, yeah, I'm just, just sprinkle a little bit. It's just to keep it from having that block. Is that, is that enough? Yeah. That was probably about an eighth, one, about yeah. an eighth a teaspoon. And just pour me a little bit of vanilla in here. You okay. know, you don't have to measure it if you don't want to. Okay. That's high That's a teaspoon. That's a teaspoon. That's a teaspoon of vanilla. See, it's boiling. Yeah, I, I see told you. Okay, now we're ready for the good stuff. Now yeah. we're ready for the vanilla. You mean the... I mean, uh, sorry, uh, the soda. That's baking soda. Okay. Sure. You have to do. You have to do that fast. Yeah, this has to be done real fast. Oh, we need to turn this off. You want to stir it real good from the bottom, so no soda. Now, if you had soda that was old and had clumps in it, it needs to be sifted. But again, we go through stuff around here so fast that we don't have to worry about that. But um, if you had a box of soda that's been in your cabinet for a long time, you do want to sift it because if you don't, there's going to be lumps in it. You see that? It's kind of a golden flavor. You have I mean, to, a golden you have to color. do that pretty quick, don't you? Yeah. I want okay. it thin. Also, so, okay. I'm just going to. And you just spread it. You have to take it and shake it like this so it'll fill the pan. Pop it. Get all the air bubbles out. And I drag my spoon from the bottom because um, if you don't, all the peanuts are going to wind up in the last couple of pans. This is going to be a little pan. pan. Oh, you do? Yeah, I'm right here. And we wave this anyway, so it don't matter if they're not the same. Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> Maybe don't burn yourself. I dropped it on that. Yeah, she weighs the peanut, the peanut brittle and the peanut patties. Do you weigh the peanut patties? Or just I peanut normally brittle? do, but um, most, I, on the website, it, it says they're three ounces, but uh, some of my peanut patties are a lot bigger than that, but I always try to make sure they're at least three ounces. But um, 
Yeah, we, we sell the peanut brittle by pounds. So it's $10 a pound. So if the patties are a little bit smaller or bigger, um, we still, break them in bag. Them. Yeah. You still get and the same them. you still get the same amount. That one you almost got too thick. Okay. Now, right, it's so a cooling so process now. The next thing you need to do is get this in some yes. very hot water yes. and let it sit. I'm going to run the water over the yeah. side of it because it's uh, filled over the side. So <laughs> You um, see, I dropped the little bit on the counter. It's already hard. Yeah, you, um, but, once you put this peanut brittle on here, uh, some people like putting it on cookie sheets and stuff like that. I'm going to tell you something. I would never pour peanut brittle out on a cookie sheet. I use these pans, these pie pans. We buy them by the case, and um, they're easy to pop out because they're thin. So that's what we use. We don't use a cookie sheet or anything. And uh, I'll tell you something else about this, too. If it does happen to get on your counter, yeah. the best thing to do is just put a hot dish rag over it and okay. let it sit a minute, okay. and that's right. going to melt that sugar. Okay. All right. And that way you don't... Uh, damage your counter trying to scrape it up um okay i'll take care of that later i don't know everything but i can tell you i know yeah, just is about the everything there is with brittle. Brittle. I'll tell you she is. okay now linda these are are cool i mean i yeah, mean they're it's, hot they're it's gonna, gonna take a while for it's to cool. gonna take a while for these to cool so what are we gonna do just um um i'll tell you what we'll do we'll do a finished we product will, we will take a a still picture of the peanut brittle we'll break some up so you can see how brittle it is because this is going to need to sit and cool probably for at least a half an hour or something. Um, so maybe not that long, but probably. So um, there it is. It looks yeah. like a beautiful color, doesn't yeah, it? It does. It's, it's beautiful. So uh, thank you again for watching. Um, we will um, see y'all again soon. Okay. Thanks. Thank y'all for uh, following us and Be sure watching to share. today. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.